Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakai Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do rule and teach well. Peace and blessing salutations to the hopefully elect. It's the brother Azariah, back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, going into the collapse of Esau's empire. Right, and this man's rulership is coming to a swift end. You know, uh, the uh, people of Babylon the Great, you know, they're suffering through uh, the collapse of their empire. All right, their dreams, hopes, and aspirations are being flushed down the toilet. And what's at the forefront of that right now is what's going on with the BRICS. All right, over the past few days, uh, it's being held in Russia, but Russia, China. Uh, Brazil, South Africa, Iran, even, and some other nations like uh, Ethiopia, you know, they've come together at this BRIC summit to pretty much discuss uh, getting off of the U.S. dollar, all right, paying for their commodities in this new BRICS pay system, all right, which we already, you know, know that all these nations, they're on board with going digital. The thing is, they don't want to, you know, these BRICS nations, they don't want to go through Amalek, all right? Because they, you know, they no nation really wants to deal with Amalek, man, all right? Because Amalek is the goddamn devil, all right? So now these Eastern nations, they're coming together and they, they're about to do their own thing, all right? But you'll see in this little short clip here that uh, the BRICS nations, you know, their overall GDP is more than the G7, more than um, Europe and America put together. Right. So they pretty much control the buying markets on the earth right now. Right. When in former years, it was the G7. Now there's a shift happening in global finance, uh, military uh, power and even socially. And it's all shifting towards the east. All right. So right now, Esau, you know, especially Amalek in the west, they're they're scrambling because, you know, they didn't expect this to happen so quick but this is a spirit of yahweh bashmel shai that has been put upon these nations man to cause that division and ultimately what's going to uh break out from this is of course world war three and of course that uh motb has to come first but as we always say continuously going into man the times that we're in are unprecedented many things are coming forth and especially now going into the election which is going to happen in not even two weeks Going into 2025, things are about to change big time, okay? So with that being said, let's check out this uh, short clip here, and we'll get into uh, some articles and some precepts as well. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. 22 heads of state, as well as delegations from more than 30 countries, the 2024 BRICS summit in Russia city of Kazan has become a truly global event. Nowadays, the BRICS group includes nine countries. In the beginning of 2024, its founding members, Brazil, Russia, India, China, as well as South Africa, were joined by Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. BRICS so you see all these nations that have come together, right? Of course, you have uh, the original China, as well as South of the BRICS, right? Uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Okay, now you also have, uh, let's see. South Africa, we're joined by Iran. Yeah, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the UAE. All right? So these are powerhouses definitely in the economic uh, sector, okay? So they looking to completely get off the dollar because, you know, they're looking at how much GDP they got combined together. And they're like, hey, listen, you know, if we come together, we can completely separate from the West. You know, we don't have to go through the West for anything. You see? So these uh, BRICS nations, you know, they're, they're about to take full control of these world markets. And uh, the West ain't ready for that, man. You know, and even now, it just came on my spirit. You know, this is why uh, Revelation 17 and 16 is going to happen. Okay, where it says that the beast shall hate the whore. And they're going to turn... And burn it with fire. Okay, uh, America's European allies, they're going to shoot missiles over to America and burn this place up. Why? 
because America is really the reason why the European nations are suffering, why they're losing their uh, countries. OK, they're the reason why, you know, America is the reason why inflation is high. America is the reason why those European nations had to stop doing business with Russia over that whole Ukraine war. You see, so now that the BRICS are now taking control, Russia is winning while America is losing. So, you know, the time is going to come where those those European nations, you know, they they hey, they pretty much going to cut their losses. You know, they're they're going to switch sides, man. You know, just like Turkey now is a part of the BRICS. You know, they you know, they switch sides now. All right. So everything is lining up. You know, this is beautiful, man. Prophecy is playing out. Egypt, Ethiopia and the United Arab Emirates. BRICS is a huge market since the population of its member states is more than three times the population of the G7 countries. Its total GDP is more than 35% of the world GDP compared to 30% held by the G7. You see that? So the BRICS combined, their GDP is 35% while the G7 is 30%. Now that may not seem like that much, but when you consider... Um, you know, global trade and things of that nature, 5% is a, is a huge number. Okay, 5% really makes a difference. All right? So these, these British nations, man, like they're, they're, they're coming together. They're putting their resources together and they're looking to flip this uh, hegemony from the West over to the East. You see, in Esau, you know, especially Amalek in the West, they're not going to go down quietly. All right? They're not just going to allow Russia... In these other nations to just, you know, come up like that, man. Nah, there's, there's, there's going to be war behind this, which is, you know, war is already on and popping. You see? But it's, you know, war is about to get turned up to the next level. Okay? And they've, even reports coming out now that what's going on in, in Ukraine, you know, that's going to, you know, spark off World War, World War Three on an unprecedented level. All right? So, yeah, man, uh, Amalek is not going to go down quietly. You see, this devil is going to go out swinging. Among the key topics of this Kazan summit are the ways for further expansion of the group and the creation of a new payment system within its framework. Many admit now that the summit in Kazan looks very beneficial for Vladimir Putin. Despite the conflict in Ukraine, Russia does not seem to be an international pariah. As we can see, it's playing host to this very high profile event with so many heads of state in attendance whose countries are having their say in a new world order. Yeah, they're having their say in, in this new world order. All right. So Esau got some competition. OK, now when you go here to this article, it says the West wants Putin isolated. A major summit he's hosting shows he's far from alone. Nearly three years after Russia's invasion of Ukraine saw so Moscow condemned by countries globally, leader Vladimir Putin is staging a summit with more than a dozen world leaders in a pointed signal from the autocrat that far, that far from being alone, an emerging coalition of countries stands behind him. The three-day BRICS summit, which started Tuesday in the southwestern city, uh, Russian city of Kazan, is the first meeting of the group of major emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, since it expanded earlier this year to include Egypt, UAE, Ethiopia, and Iran. Putin met with China's Xi Jinping at the summit on Tuesday and claimed afterwards that their country's partnership was a, quote, model of how relations between states should be built. Other leaders attended, including India's Na Narendra Modi, Iran's Masood Pe uh, Pezeshkian, South Africa's Cyril Ramaphosa, some from outside the club, like Turkish President Recep. See, <laughs> see that? So Turkey is in the mix, too. All right, Turkey like, hmm, this brick sound real good right about now, I th I, you know? I, th I think I think we about to leave NATO and get over here with these guys, <laughs> you know. Erdogan is in the mix, man. Tay uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan are also expected to join. 
Brazil President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva canceled plans to attend after suffering an injury at home. Set to be by far the largest international gathering the Russian president has hosted since the start of the war in February 2022. The gathering of BRICS and other countries this week spotlights a growing convergence of nations <clears throat> who hope to see a shift in the global balance of power. And in the case of some, like Moscow, Beijing, and Tehran, directly counter the United States-led West. All right, and, and really, this BRICS coalition coming together, they're they're going to overcome the sanctions that, that get put on the uh, the West, they get put on, you know, certain nations, because really that's, that's the reason why this whole BRICS thing, you know, really got serious, because anytime, and also uh, the dollar, which is still currently the world reserve currency, that was being used to bully these nations, all right? So with the BRICS now coming together, they're, they're able to get around those sanctions, you know what I'm saying? They're able to get around uh, having to bow down and kiss America's ass, all right? Now they can do business amongst themselves and, you know, deal way more fair, all right? So pretty much what America has done, they've made enemies with all these nations and, you know, ultimately war is about to break out because of these things, man, Okay. So the BRICS ain't playing, you know, uh, you see here, uh, Putin and Xi Jinping, they close, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they're determined to come against the West. You know, they're really the ones leading this whole uh, coalition because they're really like the two uh, strongest Eastern nations, you know, that are leading this charge against America and uh, the uh, G7. OK, in this latter message that Putin and close partner and most powerful BRICS country leader, Xi, will protect in the coming days. It's the West that stands isolated in the world with its sanctions and alliances. See, while a global majority of countries support their bid to challenge American global leadership. All right. So them sanctions really uh, shot the West. You know what I'm saying? Like they really shot themselves in the foot with them sanctions. That's pretty much what they said is, hey, if you don't play ball with us. We, you know, we're going to cut you off from the world, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to pretty much, the, you know, they would destroy your economy if you ain't do what America said. Now, BRICS is like, man, F, F you. You know what I'm saying? We, we can do our own thing. And guess what? It's even better now because the BRICS currency is backed by gold. All right. Gold, silver, oil, other commodities, while the U.S. dollar is backed by nothing. OK, really, the U.S. dollar is backed by the military. But the U.S. military really ain't shit, okay? So that's not even good enough anymore uh, to, uh, you know, hold hold any semblance of power onto, you see? So listen, man, uh, the West is, is in free fall. Uh, this this uh, U.S. dollar is going to fall any day now. This is why these uh, politicians, they keep running up the debt, right? Because they already know what time it is, man. Like, they, they, they just want to... You know, on the tip now with well, shit, we might as well just run up the debt, you know, just just completely ball out and, uh, you know, just set up this new digital technocracy, man, because there is no way that they can overcome the bricks, man. And they already know it. Right. This is why, you know, like I said, man, war is really the only option. OK, to, uh, you know, save face and, and try to uh, hold on to some sort of uh, uh, hegemony. All right, which all plays into the Lord's plans anyway for this battle of Armageddon, the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. Okay, let's get some precepts. This is Revelation 18 in verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Yeah, so America, this was once the land of milk and honey. This was the land where nations wanted to come to for the American dream, for the promise of, of a better life. Okay, that's why it says here, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich. Okay, so at one point in time, all these nations were able to benefit off of America and that U.S. dollar to wax rich, okay, to 
gather themselves many possessions. But what's happening now? All right. Yahweh Bashmiel was shy, has smitten America, Babylon the Great, with an incurable wound. And now these nations are seeing that this is no longer the land of milk and honey, that this is no longer the land of opportunity. Okay, people actually leave in America now because they see that it's in a rapid state of decline. All right, verse four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and Yahweh Bashem Shai hath remembered her iniquities. Yeah. It's clear to see from all the judgments that are taking place here in America that this place's sins have reached unto heaven, man. This place is about to be destroyed. All right. All these nations can see it. All right. And they trying to get out the way. Verse six, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled filled to her double verse 7 how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i said a queen and am no widow and shall see no tomorrow you see that so this was once the place that glorified itself yeah we're america you know we're we're the, we're the, the top nation on the planet earth nobody can come against us right this was a place where people lived deliciously, okay? At one point in time, even the poor lived deliciously here, <laughs> you see? But now what? So much torment and sorrow give her. Everybody's complaining about everything here, man. The crime, the, the you know, crazy cost of living. A damn one-bedroom apartment now costing 1500 You know what I'm saying? Food is, is expensive. Gas is, is expensive, all right? People can't afford nothing here no more, man. People can't save no damn money. You see, so these people are going through torment and sorrow right now. Okay? And this place, you know, America, you know, these, especially these Babylonians, they never thought that they would come when they would see their beloved America start to take a nosedive, man. They never thought that this place would start to decline. Okay? Because, it, you know, when you live in a society that when, when you've been raised uh, uh, from birth, you know, times were always good. Times were always prosperous. You have that normalcy bias. Like you can't see, you know, no there was a point where nobody saw Babylon the Great going down this road of destruction, man. But it's happening because it's biblical prophecy. This is the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who judges her. Okay? So this place has been smitten, man. And this place can't come back. All right. Babylon the Great is through. There ain't no it ain't no bouncing back, man. Revelation 18 and 17 for in one hour. So great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster in all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Let me get this. Stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like? unto this great city. See, America used to be the spot. America used to be the glory of all kingdoms, man. That's why I say what city is like unto this great city. Okay. But this place going to be destroyed in one hour, man. This place going to be burned with fire, thermonuclear fire and, and laser chariot fire. Okay. Verse 19. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her co costliness for in one hour she is made desolate okay this place is being made desolate man all right and guess what the bricks they're aiding in this place being made desolate this is only the beginning okay there's much more destruction to come for babylon the great you see and this is all you know the will of yahweh bashim yahweh shai you see <clears throat> And really, you know, going into this here, uh, wisdom, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, the most high, if he wanted to, could really just collapse this whole thing, <laughs> you know, in just one day, man. But he, you know, the Lord want to make these people feel the pain, man. OK, and they definitely feel it. This is wisdom of uh, Solomon, chapter 12. And. Uh, verse eight, nevertheless, even those thou sparest as men. And did it send wasps, forerunners, and thine host to destroy them by little and little. Okay, so the Most High is making these people feel the pain, man. He's destroying them little by little. 
Okay, like the Most High will do some judgments here. He he'll do some judgments there, but ultimately, you know he he's. I don't want to say prolonging the judgment of Babylon the Great because there's an appointed time, but he's he's uh, you know, making these people feel it. Okay, he he's making these people feel what the Israelites have felt for four hundred plus years, man. I say it like that. Okay, verse nine. Not that thou wast unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle or to destroy them at once with cruel beast or with one rough word. You see, so the most high could easily destroy these people with with cruel beast. All right. Or one rough word. But what? Verse 10. But executing thy judgments upon them by little and little, thou gavest them place of repentance, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation. And that their uh, malice was bred in them and that their cogitation would never be changed. You see, so ultimately, these people not going to repent. All right. And the Most High has been judging these people over the years, little by little, and their countenance did not change. OK, actually, they wax more and more wicked. OK, which hey, the scriptures say that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. OK, so, you know, so these Babylonians are not going to repent, man. This is why the judgment of the Lord is only going to increase upon this land. You see? Now, let's let's get this uh this video right here because we always got to bring it back to Rome, right? Because what's happening right now in the West is exactly how the Roman Empire fell. Mainly the Western Roman Empire, which was the head seat of uh, ancient Rome. Okay, that was uh, uh the beast or uh, Salakia, um, the head of uh, the beast that had uh, the wound by the sword. And did live. That was Western Rome. Okay, because uh, there came a point where Rome was split into two government factions. Okay, you had the the uh, the, the uh, uh, Byzantine Empire, and you had the Western Roman Empire. Okay, the uh, the Byzantine Empire after the fall of Western Rome continued on for about a thousand years. So the Byzantine Empire really didn't fall until about the fourteen hundreds, you know. But uh, Western Rome, they say, fell in like the four hundreds A.D. OK, so. Western Rome, you know, had that wound by the sword and did live. So they came back during the time of the Renaissance. But going into how Western Rome fell directly connected to how uh, the um, collective West today is falling. It's, it's, it's all the same thing. OK, you had economic collapse, you had social collapse, you know, uh, the military collapse. And you had outside invaders, wars, you know what I'm saying, uh, overexpanding the empire. Okay, pretty much the fall of Rome was really concentrated down to they just made too many enemies. All right. Which America today and the G7 have, have they pretty much made enemies of all nations, man. Everybody want they had because of how they've dealt with the nations. Okay, how they've ruled the nations in wrath. All right. So this is the fall of the Roman Empire. All right, facts. And uh, going into this, it, 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 it's really a good illustration to show you uh, the parallels between what happened with Rome and what's happening today with this modern day, uh, you know, B system. So let's get into it. Why did Rome fall? At its height, the Roman Empire was an unparalleled superpower encompassing vast territories across Europe, Asia, and Africa. It boasted advanced infrastructure, complex political system, and an extremely powerful military. However, by the 5th century AD, the empire was in severe decline. <clears throat> so what exactly happened? That question has been asked by dozens of major authors over the course of centuries. For some, like Edward Gibbon, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire was largely a question of moral turpitude, a lack of civic virtue. For others, the fall was more about military overreach and environmental catastrophe. The truth is, like all history, incredibly complicated. The Western Roman Empire, the territory comprising modern-day Italy, Spain, France, Portugal, and much of Northern Africa, fell because of a confluence of factors. Those factors break down into essentially four. Economic, governmental, environmental, and social. Let's begin with the economic. The Roman Empire was a heavily centralized economy, with the Roman government setting prices, currency rates, and quotas. While early emperors had allowed some elements of the free market, Later emperors began to squeeze outlying areas in favor of subsidies closer to home. In an attempt to resolve financial issues, Roman emperors repeatedly reduced the silver content in coins, leading to rampant inflation. So you see that? To solve 
inflation, they started uh, cutting down the amount of, uh, you know, precious metals that were in the coins. All right. Which is pretty much what, what they're doing today. All right. Because they, you know, they're already in a massive amount of debt and they continue to print all of this money. Okay. Which is oversaturating the economy with pretty much useless dollars. And now that the bricks are getting off of the dollar, all those dollars that were circulating overseas, they're now going to come back home to America. And guess what? That's going to further oversaturate the system, which is going to lead to hyperinflation. So this is why um, these, these big bankers, you know, they're selling off their assets. Okay. They're closing down uh, institutions, banking, uh, storefronts, things like that, because they already see the writing on the wall. They know that this place, America, don't have that much longer left, man. All right, so they're you know pretty much bailing out, and um, you know they're putting their money into building bunkers and other projects. All right, to uh, you know fight against Yahweh, why Yahweh shy in the day of judgment, man. Right, that's what their money is going towards. That's you know going towards war, you know creating diseases and things like that. that you know that's that's what these devils are doing. But yeah, just the same as in the ancient Roman Empire, they devalued the currency. They're doing the same thing today. This erosion of monetary value, debasing the currency, severely weakened the economy and eroded trust in the government's financial management. Without a free market, the heavy hand of the Roman military had to be applied more broadly in order to gain resources. That also meant higher costs. Meanwhile, taxes increased on the wealthy. The empire also became more and more dependent on slaves, given that freedom in wages would have required a free market. Thanks to raging inflation and taxation increases, the emperor Diocletian, 284-305 AD, attempted price controls. More centralization of the economy followed in the footsteps of the failures of such measures. In the words of historian Bruce Bartlett, in the end, there was no money left to pay the army, build forts or ships, or protect the frontier. Barbarian invasions, which were the final blow to the Roman state in the 5th century, were simply the culmination of three centuries of deterioration in the fiscal capacity of the state to defend itself. Next, let's turn to the government. As the Roman government became more and more centralized in terms of power, support of the army became the crucial factor in attaining leadership. This meant that anyone who could gain credibility with the army could make a play for the throne. And that's precisely what happened repeated military coups. The third century AD saw 29 different emperors. Emperors were frequently overthrown or assassinated, leading to a rapid turnover of leadership. This political turmoil weakened the central authority and made it difficult to implement consistent policy. We'll get to more on this in a moment. First, there's recently been some monumental news no one's talking about. For the first time in American history, the interest we pay on the national debt surpassed can do with the help of birch gold. Over 20 years, birch the division of the empire into Western and Eastern Roman empires by Diocletian was intended to make administration more manageable, but it also created a rivalry between the two halves. While the Eastern Empire, which would become known as the Byzantine Empire, managed to survive for another thousand years, the Western Empire struggled to cope with internal divisions and external pressures. The importance of the army also meant... A you see, and ultimately, uh, the, 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 the Roman Empire was split because there was a period of ongoing civil war that was plaguing uh, Rome, all right? So pretty much to handle things better and also to, uh, you know, better deal with the barbarians that were invading the empire, they, they, they split the government in two. You know what I'm saying? They had the East, which was the, the Byzantine Empire, and they had the West. Well, guess what? In the Western Roman Empire, things were so out of control because everywhere you look, there was civil war popping up. There were, there were uh, uh, rebellions happening. OK, because Rome, they were oppressive, man. So even back then, you you know, what I'm saying like you steady had them making enemies and people wanting to come against them and take them down. So much so to the point where their military was spread so thin between both the empires that they could no longer defend their own borders. OK, and right now, America in, in uh, uh, the West is the same thing. You have America in, in Ukraine. You got America over there in Taiwan. All right. You got America in, uh, uh, you know, Gaza. You see what I'm saying? You have wars on many fronts. OK. And, and, and guess what? They're not protecting. They're not protecting the homeland. So this place about to be invaded. All right. So the most high is bringing 
you know, is, is going to require that which is past, man. Okay, the Most High is going to end this place just like how he ended ancient Rome. Every, every, listen, watching this video, you really see how everything is playing out. The same very things that plagued the ancient Western Roman Empire is plaguing this modern day beast system today, which came out of ancient Rome. Actually, it's an extension of the ancient Western Roman Empire. Constant attempt to maintain military support, which meant both bribery and frequent military action. The pressure from barbarian invasions further exacerbated the empire's woes. Various tribes, including the Visigoths, Vandals, and Huns, began to penetrate Roman territories in the 4th and 5th centuries. The sack of Rome by the Visigoths in 410 AD and the Vandals in 455 AD were catastrophic blows that symbolized the empire's vulnerability. Now the environmental. Epidemics, such as the plague of Cyprian in the 3rd century AD, decimated the population, reducing the number of able-bodied men available for military service and labor. Additionally, soil depletion and deforestation from centuries of agricultural exploitation. And they're doing the same very thing today, man. Okay, you got these devils, you know, creating uh, uh, diseases, which was really, you know, it's all from Yahweh Bashim El Shai. You know, um, a lot of people are, you know, falling out from that serpent venom. Okay, you have mass deforestation. Okay, uh, you have uh, the government shutting down the farms. You see? <laughs> so this is spot on, man, which shows you that we're in Rome all over again. Let's continue. And to decreased agricultural productivity, contributing to food shortages and economic decline. Finally, the social. Edward Gibbon famously suggested that the moral character of the Roman people had been sapped over the course of centuries. A military overstretch had brought home, quote, the vices of strangers and mercenaries, and thus first oppressed the freedom of the Republic and afterwards violated the majesty of the purple. Historian Victor Davis Hansen argues, quote, Clearly, the pernicious effects of affluence and laxity warped Roman sensibility and created a culture of entitlement that was not justified by revenues or the creation of actual commensurate wealth. And the resulting debits, inflation, debased currency, and gradual state impoverishment gave the far more vulnerable Western Empire far less margin of error when barbarians arrived or rival generals marched on Rome. Does any of that sound familiar? Too much affluence, too much laxity, a belief that wealth was simply a part of life as opposed to something to be created, high levels of taxation, centralized economics, imperial overstretch. All of this sounds a little bit familiar. After the fall of Rome... And <laughs> it's all too familiar, man, because like I just said, we're in Rome all over again. The same very things that happened in the collapse of that empire back then is the same thing that's taking its place down now. All right, call her Lord Yahweh by Shemiel Bashai, man. You see? Let's get uh let's get James chapter five. James chapter five and verse one. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten, which is a sign of what? Decay. All right. This place, America, Babylon the Great, is in a state of moral, military, uh economic and you know just decay in all aspects man all right corrupted garments are moth eaten man decay verse three your gold and silver is cankered the the the, uh, the currency is on the way out man the bricks are coming up now the the american dollar is not backed by anything all right hyperinflation is coming man that's why i said your gold and your silver is cankered and the rest of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as if it were fire Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you, kept back by fraud, crieth. Okay? So the laborers are now crying out. Okay? You have uh, Boeing. You know, they, they got a strike going on right now. All right? Uh, you, you were about to have a strike on the ports happen, you know, just a few weeks ago. You see? But overall, the laborers are not happy, man. OK, they're crying out against the rulers and saying that, you know, we can't survive in this economy because inflation is, is so crazy. You know, everybody's bills is going up, but your paycheck ain't going up, though. OK, the laborers have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Cry and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. You see that? So this place is wicked, man. This place got to go. All right. This is what the scriptures is telling you, man. This place can't be saved. It can't be healed, man. But you got these wacky, tacky Christians out here 
talking about they want to pray for America. How can you pray for America when this is a, this was a land that was founded upon bloodshed and wickedness, man, rebellion against Yahweh Bashmel was shy. How can you pray for this place, man? No, this place is going to be burned with fire. Okay? Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he does not resist you. See? Okay, all of the slain of the Israelites that you put to death. They, they, you know, they, when they wasn't at war with you. All right? Jake did, the, the, you know, um, uh, Eric Garner, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, the Trail of Tears, you know, slavery. Listen, man, uh, uh, Devil's Punch Bowl, you know, Oscarville, Black Wall Street. We can go on and on about the atrocities of this devil. All the flood towns, you know, all the towns that you burned down, you know what I'm saying? All the jakes that you done hang by trees and then, you know, burn for fun. You see what I'm saying? We can go on and on about about this damn, uh, uh, you know, devil, man. You see? But in the meantime, they've lived in pleasure, okay? They, they wasn't thinking about judgment coming to them because they had it so good. Well, guess what? Now, you're about to read what you saw, all right? He have condemned to kill the just, and he did not resist you. Verse 7, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain, all right? So, amen. Bottom line, this place is through. The bricks are coming together and they're about to uh, make sure. See, the Lord is going to raise up the bricks, man, for this, you know, short season. And he's going to cause that division between the east and the west. All right. So this thing about to go down, man. So, you know, for us, you know, we just got to keep watching these things, keeping the faith. And hey, we are almost out of here. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out. Lord willing, this lesson was edified through the Rakaq and Dash. Call Allah, Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakaq and Dash. And until next time, Lord willing, Shalom to the elect, come Yasha Allah, and the Bible Ball.